that has fan following which is so widespread and for them this material is so sacred also was it any kind of pressure while you were attempting Tolkien's work? Well, I mean, the biggest pressure was the pressure that Patrick and I put on ourselves, um, simply because there, um, there's such a need for what Middle Earth can bring to our world. Um, there's a real darkness in our world right now. Um, there's a lot of people who are in a lot of pain, um, political darkness, uh, economic darkness, social darkness, just a lot of challenges. And Middle Earth speaks to people in their soul. Um, it's one of the reasons why Tolkien's work has been, I mean, next to like the Bible, the Quran, and certain writings of Mao Zedong, Tolkien has been the most selling work of all, of all time. And I think that's because no matter what country people come from, no matter what background they have, um, when people find Tolkien, it, it goes past all of those other things and finds them in their heart and in their soul. And so we felt like we needed to capture that special feeling of Tolkien. Because really, the second age, the story I mentioned a moment ago, Tolkien sketched it out, but he didn't do it in a ton of detail in, in a lot of parts. So there was a lot of things where we had to very carefully excavate what he had shown us, but then also to um, continue to, uh, to connect the dots and, and fill some, some of the gaps in where necessary. So we tried to do that in as Tolkienian a way as possible um, to be able to bring that light and that feeling of Middle Earth. And I could say that one of my best moment so far was we, we um, showed some Tolkien super fans about 20 minutes of the show and we were sort of flies on the wall sitting in the back of the auditorium and I heard uh, and uh, someone asked well what did you guys think of it and one of them said you know it just feels like Middle Earth and I spontaneously broke into tears <laughs> and I was like that's all I wanted to accomplish. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, we are doing it the first time. Let's kill one more time. Thank you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's been it's been so nice, you know, knowing these things from you. But I really want to meet, meet the, the cast. Yeah, yeah. Cast. totally excited to bring them out. Yeah, I'm happy to introduce them. Shall we? Uh, yeah, um, guys, you want to start walking on out, and I'll, I'll give you introductions as you do. I think first I see I, I see stand up. do I see Naz Nazanin Bonyadi? I think is our first one back there. So we have Nazanin Bonyadi who plays Bronwyn. Welcome. We have, we have Maxim Baldry, who plays Isildur. We have Markella Cavanaugh. Markella Cavanaugh, who plays Eleanor Nori Brandyfoot. We have Lloyd Owen, who plays Elendil. We have Sara Zagorbani, who plays Marigold Brandyfoot. And we have Charlie Edwards, who plays Kella Brimbor. And Megan Richards, who plays Poppy. Let's make sure there's enough stage. Poppy Proudfellow, I should say. And we have Tyro Muhafadin who plays Theo. And we have Emma Horvath, who plays Arian. And Rob Aramayo, who plays Elron Peredale. And I think that's it. Everyone, one more welcome for our entire Lord of the Rings cast. Welcome to India, guys. Thank you. Thank it's you. amazing Thank you. to have you guys here. And all the best. Good luck for this. It looks incredible. Robert, I have a question for you. You're playing one of the most famous Elvin characters, Elrond. What does Elrond mean to you? And uh, how do we meet Elrond in the Middle Age in, in these series? Yeah, well, it's the Second Age, so he's um, much younger than the trilogy or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, he's half Elven, which is a sort of unique thing in the Elven world. Um, he's young, he's ambitious, uh, he's serving his king. Um, 
and yeah, curious about different cultures and stuff. Was it fun? Very fun. Very <laughs> was it fun. hard? <laughs> Very hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Nazanin, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. So you play Bronwyn of, South, of the Southlands. Yes. And she's a healer. So what we've seen in the trailer is she's extremely powerful, yet she's nurturing. So from where did you draw the strength to play a character this magnanimous? Thank you for the question. It's so good to be back in India. Uh, and thank you for your warm welcome and hospitality. Um, I love playing Bronwyn because she's so multifaceted. She's, as you said, a healer, um, a single mother to a rebellious teenage son played by Tyro, wow. in a forbidden romance with an elf, Arondir, who is tasked with watching over the Southlanders. I play a Southlander who, who historically, her ancestors chose the wrong side, they chose evil over good, and she's trying very hard to redeem them. What I love about her is that she is uh, very resilient and strong, as you said, um, as well as nurturing. And I was, a, I was gonna be a doctor before I act, started acting. I have a degree in biology, so that side of her, the healing side, resonates with me. But also, her determination to redeem her people and to liberate them from the forces of, of evil of their past, the shackles of their past really resonates with me as an activist because um, I'm a long time activist for my homeland, Iran, human rights activist. And women in Iran and in many places in the world are at the, the forefront of the move towards democracy, freedom, and human rights. And so that's where I drew inspiration. That's amazing. That's amazing. So. And may I just say, I've, I have seen your work and, and I think you're an incredible actor. And thank you for all the, the wonderful things that you're doing and you're standing for. Thank you very much, thank you. Excellent. Tyro, my Hello. man. How's it going? <laughs> you play Theo, right? Yes. And you're the youngest of them all. Looks like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? What's the experience, man? Well, I mean, I think this is kind of big for everyone because it's not every day you get to work on The Lord of the Rings, which is huge. Um, but, you know, thank you to JD for entrusting me with, with the role, given my inexperience, I guess you could say. But, um, no, I think the whole cast has been really, really, really supportive and, you know, have really taken me under their wing, especially Nas. Um, you know, I was very, very nervous and anxious. I, I came from working on sets with, like, five people as the crew to hundreds. Um, and, you know, it was very, very overwhelming, but, you know, with J.A. and, you know, Wayne and Charlotte and Nas, Ismael, Ian, everyone that I worked with um, just made me feel so comfortable and helped me do my job, which is, which is ultimately the, the most important thing. And, yeah, I went from Perth to Mumbai in front of all these beautiful people, and I'm here, and, yeah, how's it going, everyone? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm truly, truly blessed. That's amazing, man. You almost look in character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like the style. Thank you. <laughs> it's a Middle Earth orange. <laughs> it's Middle Earth orange. And uh, Charles. Yes. Hi. Yes, hi. Senior work. Big fan. Thank you very much. Um, everyone knows uh, the famous Elvin characters of Galadriel and Elrond, but I believe there is no story without you. Do you agree? <laughs> I'd have to agree with that, yes. <laughs> Good answer. Although, no, there are other, obviously there are many, many other stories and themes in Tolkien and in our, in our show, but ultimately the story of the Rings of Power is the one that brings them all uh, to a head. But that's what's so interesting about Tolkien. For such a major storyline, he gives Celebrimbor a very little uh, page space. He's, uh, he's mentioned briefly, and those contradict each other, those mentions. So what we are, Hunt, uh, the showrunners, myself, the heads of department, the directors and the writers, is to find uh, the hooks that Tolkien has given us, mm. um, hang a few things on there, see how that goes, and then rummage around in the wardrobe a little more, see what else one can find in there, a few more hooks, a few more bits and pieces, hang it all up and, and see how it looks. And um, it's also the first time that Keller Brimble has been featured <coughs> in a live action uh, adaptation of Tolkien's stories, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you all think about him. Amazing.
Lloyd, I'd really like to ask you, you're playing Ellen Dell. I am. the father to... Um, Isildur. Isildur, Isildur, yeah. Isildur it's is a very important here. character, but I just didn't want to do debauchery of the language service. Like, okay, let me not get Isildur wrong, because everyone out there will want to come after me then. So, um, so definitely, you're playing the father to Isildur and Aryan, who's played by Maxim and Emma. So, um, can you tell us what do we expect out of the series? And, um, and what is this world and what, what is it, what is it, what, what's, what's been the experience for you uh, being a part of this? Thank you for the question. First of all, it's really, really good to be back in India too, like Nas. Uh, I've had a beautiful experience working here in the past, so very happy to be back. Um, yes, Elendil, who is, uh, as we see him at the beginning of the, the series, He's a sea captain, very capable man, but he's been, he's been widowed and he's trying to deal with his grieving adult children, two of whom are present here in, in, in Maxim and Emma, as you say. Um, and he's a very, very well-known character in The Legendary Man. Many fans of the movies would have seen, seen him in brief, but if you read the books, he's referred back to a lot. And he's a sort of hero archetype. Um, and he's very dear to a lot, of the, a lot of the fans' hearts for that reason, because of his ultimate self-sacrifice at the end during the, the alliance of elves and men where he dies in the act of trying to defeat Sauron. So, but again, rather like Charles was saying about Celebrimbor, um, there are only these, these sort of limited signposts along the way that Tolkien gives us. To, so uh, there's this great sort of responsibility and privilege and excitement to be able to fill out those, those gaps. And... Where, where we see him at the very beginning is, is, is this one, Tolkien's Atlantis uh, is Numenor, the island of Numenor, where, we, where, where Elendil comes from. Um, and, and at this point in the story, we, Numenor is at its absolute peak, but it's right on the precipice between a, a sort of more nationalist uh, side of the island which, which feels they need an independence from the elves and a more faithful side and, and Elendil is very much torn between those two parts of society between his head and his heart his head is rational, pragmatic, trying to keep his family safe and his heart is drawn towards the faithful and something of the schism in, in that society is also reflected deep in the family within his children so that there's a lot for him to deal with at the beginning and uh, I'm very excited to, to chart this man to... Uh, huh. Through, through that journey. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very privileged and very excited to be here. As an actor being on, on the set, uh, the adaptation of Numenor, nobody's ever seen this world. So how is it to be on a set which so many people have imagined but never really seen? You were actually there. So what was the experience like? It was genuinely extraordinary in the sense that... Um, in, in the modern world, we expect everything to be CGI now, but, but, but we built Numenor, we built the capital city of Numenor, and it took six months to build, and I remember the first day walking onto that set was quite an extraordinary experience. I was with JD, and he, he showed me around, and um, just the attention to detail, the, 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 the amount of skill uh, and brilliance in every department on this job, and, and ultimately, the dedication and love that you feel. So they built the city from the ground up and you can feel the history and how, how architecture changed over centuries, where loyalties lie, um, and, and the changing face of, of the landscape uh, around it. Because that was also, I also, I think my second day on set was um, filming a sequence on the beach with Galadriel as we're, as we're riding our horses. Uh, and again, was, was with JD and we realized that this is the first time that we'd seen the geography of Numenor, the physical geography of Numenor. And that was another beautiful moment to think, wow, I've actually, I'm actually the first person to be part of that. So that was, that was super exciting. And there was, there's one member of our security team from Amazon who walked us back when we were in Comic-Con, walked us back to the hotel. And she said, I've been, to I've been told not to talk to the actors and geek out about Lord of the Rings. I was like, come on, geek out, geek out. Let's see what you, let's see what you got. But she'd said her, both her parents were fans of Lord of the Rings. She'd read it. She'd read The Silmarillion. She'd watched the movies. And she said, and when she saw Numenor on screen for the first time, she'd seen the first three episodes, she said she just burst into tears. And I, I thought that was a really, really good sign that oftentimes when we read the books, our imagination is really powerful, but somehow this exceeded her expectations, or should I say enhanced her expectations of what Numenor, Numenor was. So I was, I was really, really pleased about that. 
That's really amazing. That's All really I'm thinking is I wish I had that voice. <laughs> I know, it's a great voice, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it's a little deeper after the yeah, airplane flight. You can flight. use we it, right? Took, you know how to use uh, it. <laughs> Lloyd, the thing is, most of the times I sound like you. <laughs> so I have a hard time sounding like me. <laughs> Maxim Isildur, huh? Yes. How does it feel? Because this is, this is a character that everyone is waiting to watch and um, it has fans all over the world. So, where does this arrive in the series? Um, well, he's a sailor on the kind of cusp of adulthood when we first meet him and there's an emptiness and a void in him uh, and I guess he's not, he doesn't really want to fit in to societal expectations of him. He doesn't want to really be like his father in a way, but then there's a pressure to also... Children. <laughs> uh, so you kind of meet him deliberating and yearning for something else that potentially is um, not in Numenor, not on the island. Nice. <laughs> Emma, I have a question to ask you. Do you want to say something, Riti? Go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to say anything? Absolutely sure. Just checking. I was just thinking he could uh, do well in Hindi films. Actually, he does have yeah. a very Indian face. Yeah. I don't know if it's... I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, would you do a film in which you'd cast the three of us? The three of us? Yeah, why not? Yeah, well, if you write it. <laughs> anyone interested? Make us Mr. out Payne. there, in case anyone's listening to us. Between seasons, see no evil, hear no evil. <laughs> 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 Emma, your character. Hi. How is Mumbai treating you? Please it's, tell me. It's awesome. It's I'm awesome. so happy to be here. I've never even been to Asia, so this is, I mean, wow. continental and country-wise. I'm like, wow. Totally new. And when did you come in, if I may ask? Sorry? When did you reach her, if I may ask? Uh, 3 a.m. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks so stunning. <laughs> guys, All of big you guys. round That's of applause incredible. for just that absolute beauty. <laughs> Emma, you're playing Aryan. Yes. And that's a beautiful name. Yeah, I, I love it. Do you love it? Yeah, yeah I think it's, I, it's, it sounds very magical. Mm -hmm. um, it, means, it means sea maiden. Sea maiden. No. Oh, that's beautiful. I was about to ask you, what does it mean? About okay. the name, yeah? No, no, good, good, good. That's, uh, <laughs> but does this have any significance with, um, you know, is it relevant in any way to the islands of Numenor? Or is, is there any significance as to how we, that's a part of how you created the character? Yes. Um, Numenor is a very nautical society, and so it's very apt that she's named after the sea. Um, Isildur means servant of the moon, and Anarion, the middle child, uh, is a reference to the sun. Uh, so her siblings, their names reference sort of celestial heavenly bodies, and her name is quite grounded, um, which is very apt because uh, the schism that Lloyd was mentioning that's occurring on the island is also s starting to shake, take shape within the family. Um, she's immensely proud of her people and the island and the beauty that they've created um, and the society that they've created. And she's quite frustrated with both of her brothers who have these sort of romantic ideas of the past and spend a lot of time sort of looking up and she's very much looking down at the beauty that her people have created. So, um, yeah, I think her name is, is very appropriate. It's a beautiful Same name indeed. Yeah. And Markella, hi again. Hello. <laughs> you play uh, Nori, a Harfoot. Yes. Am I saying that right? Harfoot. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't working before. Um, yes, I do. I play Harfoot. Harfoot. What? What is a Harfoot? A Harfoot. They are. They're a migratory group. They're a community, and um, they have big feet and ears, and they have a lot of heart and joy. Um, and stick together in the face of adversity and they just, they're constantly looking over their shoulders but they, they're optimists as well, despite having to be survivors. Is there anything specific that makes them special to you? I think that they don't see their vulnerability as a weakness. I think that wow. they, they're able to... I like that. ...to recognize how it can be a strength and actually by opening up to people to, you know, the rest of the community and to their loved ones, right. they can hopefully find a better life for themselves and, and find themselves a home. Right. 
And Megan, Megan, you, uh, hi, Megan. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, you play Poppy, who is uh, best friends with Nori. Yes, I do. Right, and what can we expect out of this friendship? Um, Poppy and Nori's friendship, um, they are very much the yin to each other's yang. Um, Poppy is sort of the more cautious out of the two of them, and I think it's safe to say Nori is the more adventurous of the two of them. Yes. So that already tells you quite a lot. <laughs> um, but Poppy sticks by Nori's side throughout the series, um, and that is sort of like an ongoing theme, I think. Um, but she does that because she finds it important. She has such a love and loyalty for her friend. Um, and she finds it, you know, Markel has already mentioned the community, and in the community they have a very specific set of rules. Mm. Um, and they're very important in order to make sure, in order to ensure everybody's safety. And Poppy really believes in those. Um, and so the reason that she follows Nori is, to, is for protection. She believes that that's the best way to protect everybody, community included. So they get up to a lot of adventure um, and a lot of mischief. Did you <laughs> and all a lot of fun. Sorry. Did y'all know each other before uh, the, uh, the no, shoot? No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We met on the day. On the yeah. day. Maybe like a couple of weeks before yeah. we started filming. I but it was, it was really nice because we got to sort of hang out and call it work. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, it was really nice. That's nice. They're like sisters, these two. It's amazing. <laughs> and Sarah, Sarah, you, uh, you have been a fan of the books and the films, and now you get to play the matriarch of the Brandyfoot Harfoot family. I do, yes. Wow, what, uh, what did, uh, was that like for you? Well, it's amazing. I just suddenly realised there's three parents here with naughty children, actually. That's a bit of a theme of today. I haven't actually done a, um, uh, interviews with the, with the other parents here, so it's quite funny. Um, <laughs> Um, as a fan of fantasy, it was obviously incredible, but I, I don't think you needed to be a fan of fantasy to uh, realise that this is an absolute dream job. I mean, uh, first of all, this incredible cast that I get to work with and that I get to now travel around the world with and come to an amazing country like India, where I haven't been before, um, <laughs> is just a joy. So, uh, lover of fantasy or not, it, it was it's been one of the best jobs of my career. Um, playing Marigold is also an absolute honour. Um, thank you to JD and Patrick. Being a, a parent to this um, beautiful actress here, Michaela Kavanagh, and a surrogate mum to Megan Richards, and having so much fun on set. Um, the Harfoots, as, as Michaela was saying, you know, they, they've been through a lot, but they have a lot of joy and laughter and love, and that's what it was like being on set. We, we just had such an incredible time working together. Um, and I'm still, I'm quite Quite stunned that I'm sitting here with them all now, able to talk about it to the world. It's it's just such a privilege. Well, I have to say, the joy and the love, it shows. It's showing on all your faces. This is going to be a great one, guys. JD, to round this off, do you have anything that you want to tell our lovely audiences? And also, do my elfish ears make a cut? Like They're wonderful. I mean, you would have to actually have to, have to cut them a little bit to help them make the cut, but they, they, uh, okay. but they're close. They're close. Okay, good. Let's talk. Have your people call my people. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Um, yes. Well, I just, I just wanted to reiterate what a special group of people you have in front of you right now. It's been my great joy to work with them each over the course of several years now. And, and I look at them each and, and have a dozen stories that pop into my mind for every single one of the people here. And um, you're, you're just getting a small taste of it now, but each of them in some moment of the season will take your breath away. Um, they truly have that special something that is, is part of Middle Earth that is inside of them that they've managed to capture with these characters. Um, and the world is going to discover it very soon. And also, a few, few last things I'd, I'd love to say is that um, I take it here, many people are, are fans of, of, of Tolkien, but if you haven't ever experienced Tolkien before, uh, if you've never even worn a ring before, um, and have no idea, what, or if you wandered off the street, and, or if this is reaching someone who, who hasn't experienced Middle Earth, um, you don't need to know anything about uh, Tolkien to uh, enjoy this show. You can walk in off the street having never seen any of the movies, having never, never read any of the books, um, and the show will sweep you away and, and tell you all that you need to know about Middle Earth and then hopefully point you back to the books because they're really worth doing the deep, deep dive on. They're, they're books that really stay with you and get inside of you in, in a very unique and special way. Um, and uh, this is a time uh, in, in the world when, when we need a little bit of Tolkien and we all need a little bit of Middle Earth. So we hope that you're able to in, enjoy the show and uh, feel that special thing that each of these people has been such a, a, a foundational part of bringing to life these years. Um, so, so thank you very much for having us here. We really appreciate it. It's amazing. Thank you.
I have to say this to JD, to the entire cast and crew, that this is something that I personally believed in, that cinema, in any language, anywhere in the world, the moment it is based on human emotions, basic human emotions, um, it always cuts through all. There's, there's no language needed, there's no country needed, and I feel like uh, that faith that I have uh, in the cinema that I want to do has been reaffirmed by Rings of Power. So thank you, thank you all for coming here and being a part of this press conference. We are so excited for this and we can't wait to see the series. Thank you so much, Tamana, and thank you, Riddick. Thank you, thank thank you, you, thank you very you. much. Wasn't that a wonderful... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to pull a ring of power on you. But yeah, wasn't that a wonderful moment for all us fans of the Lord of the Rings. Let's give them a huge round of applause for Ritik, Tamanna and the wonderful cast and crew of Lord of the Rings, at the Rings of Power. It's a perfect opportunity for a photo op at this point, yeah? Yeah, let's have Gaurav, Albert and Sushant back on stage for a wonderful photo op with the cast and crew, Ritik and Tamanna. Nikalu. How will you take it off? Everybody gets Stop a picture. That. Can you help? I'll get that, don't worry. Thank you. Awesome. Good, good, good. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sushant and thank you all for coming here. We saw quite a few of you at our recent Maiden Prime Video Presence event here in India a couple of months ago and I thank you all you know, very much for coming here today. Since our launch in India, uh, about five and a half years ago, our goal at Prime Video has been to cater to a delightfully diverse India. Our vision is to be the world's most loved video subscription service and the first choice entertainment hub globally. And to this end, our single mantra to exceed the entertainment needs of our customers has been to super serve. Our efforts at super serving customers across the length and breadth of the country have resulted in today India being amongst the most, or India having amongst the most engaged Prime members streaming on Prime Video each month. Today, customers from 99% of PIN codes in India stream on Prime Video regularly, and customers from more than 240 countries and territories are immersing themselves in Indian stories. Wow. That's right, yeah, more than that's 240 wild. countries and territories. <laughs> and similarly, Indian viewers right, are immersing themselves in stories from across the world. So, you know, their willingness to go venture out of what may what may seem familiar, mm -hmm. right, and really go in search of great stories with compelling, nuanced narratives is honestly extremely delightful and truly unmatched. Truly, I mean, I completely agree with you, Sushant. In fact, the number of international series and movies I must have watched on Prime Video in just the last month is mind-boggling. And to tell us how the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, fits into our ambition to super serve customers, let's welcome on stage the country head for Prime Video India, Gaurav Gandhi. Thank you, Sushant Zaksis. Good evening, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to have you all with us here today. But before we proceed, uh, I'd like to call, call on stage Albert Chang, uh, Amazon Studio CEO, a very warm welcome to him. Sorry. So Sushant told us about all the stuff that we've been working on, all the amazing things, the shows and the movies, but there's nothing that matches what we have here for you now. This is mega, epic, global. The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. The most ambitious undertaking in the history of television. And for something that's as massive in scale we, and rich in detail, we need to have the massive reach to 
So we have a biggest release in 240 countries and territories in more than 30 languages globally. And in India, we have the show available to us in English, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and Malayalam. So you can immerse yourself in the stories on, and the world of elves, dwarves, Harfords, humans, and Numenorians. We are thrilled to have Albert with us, here with us today to talk more about this world and the journey. Albert, first of all, we've been talking about you coming to India for a while. <laughs> so, uh, and we missed you in April. So thank you for coming. How's it been so far? It's been great. I, I'm really a big fan of India um, and I've been a huge fan of everything from movies to series and also the food, which Gaurav uh, really, very nicely <laughs> invited me to lunch and had some of that. But, but honestly, like, it's great for you to be here. And like, about the premiere, Albert, why don't you tell everyone, like, what, what, when we're thinking about the, the, the locations for it and to host the APAC premiere in India, what, what was the inspiration to do that here? Well, we're seeing a fantastic customer adoption here. Uh, India is witnessing the maximum number of new customers worldwide who started streaming on Prime Video last year. It's one of the fastest growing and most engaged locales of, for Prime Video worldwide within just five years of launch. And now Indian Originals now have a massive fan following globally too. So one in every five viewers of an Indian Original series is from outside India. That's true. So India has the largest slate of local originals outside of the U.S., over 70 shows in various stages of production and development. So it made perfect sense for us to premiere our biggest international series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power in India. And of course, Mumbai is recognized globally as one of the entertainment capitals in the world alongside Los Angeles and London. So this made it the perfect choice to host our first Asia Pacific premiere. We couldn't be happier about that one, honestly. But you know, tell us, like we've launched so many big originals over the last year, a few years, and they've all been loved across, across geographies, here in India, elsewhere in the world. What makes this one so special? Well, this, sh this show is really a universal story. It has the potential to touch the hearts of people across the world. The Rings of Power is an engaging, untold epic drama grounded in humanity and set across fantastical worlds. So it's really groundbreaking, groundbreaking in its richness and its attention to detail. The cinematic scope, the originality within Tolkien's Legendarium, and all of this is propelled by stunning performances by our incredible cast. It has captivating visuals, elaborate stunts, set pieces, sword play, harrowing journeys, and sweeping action. And the series asks the ultimate question, how far into the darkness are you willing to go to save the people and places you love? So this is an incredible show. It's packed with human emotions, themes of good versus evil, multi-generational power struggles, leadership, loyalty, brotherhood, courage in the face of wow. extreme adversity, warriors in the constant thrust of battle, romance, betrayal, and raw human emotion. So what's, what's incredible about this franchise, especially in India, is that it has and enjoys a euphoric fandom here in this country and all over the world. And as a result, we are releasing this in multiple languages in India, including English, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, and Kannada. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you know, you talked about cinematic value, and you know, you can't help, notice, uh, help but notice, but in the trailer and the teaser, that the detail, every frame, is so powerful uh, and has that cinematic appeal. And, and I was wondering, like, you, know, you work so closely on this, like, how was it working with, with JD and Patrick and the team to, to get this to life? Well, it took a lot, a lot of work, five plus years in the making uh, in getting here to the show. Uh, and world building in this series is epic. It's really epic. Every episode is like an hour of cinema and it really is different than television. It's not even television. It's a totally yeah. different form of entertainment. Totally. And there's so much detail to every moment and every costume prop set you see on screen. And it isn't just the actors and the performances. The viewers will see worlds that they haven't seen before on screen from mm -hmm. the Tolkien uh, mm -hmm. uh, second age. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tolkien's fantasy has always come from a sense of reality and from the language to all of these worlds we've created. Uh, most of all, um, I'm really ex extremely proud of our incredible ensemble cast, many of, the, of whom are here with me today and that you will meet very shortly. 
These actors are amazing, and you will see that in their performances, they truly embody Middle Earth. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Uh, and in terms of our showrunners, yeah. uh, our showrunners, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, have been incredible to work with. They have taken so much care in really um, exuding the spirit of Tolkien in everything that they're doing. And every time they're trying to figure out how they're going to want, you know, weave the story, they always go back to what would, what would Tolkien actually do. Yeah. So we're yeah. very proud of them. They yeah. are the perfect people to take this adaptation of the Second Age, and we're so proud to have them on, on the show. Nice. Now, I've spoken a bit about the series, mm -hmm. um, but I'm really keen to know, as the country head of Prime Video India, what excites you about the series? Uh, just what you're saying right now, I think, I truly believe Tolkien is the originator of most of modern fantasy. Uh, sto his stories are timeless, relatable, they, you know, they immerse people in, in themselves and they inspire imagination and stoke imagination even today. People keep going back to that all the time. So I, I feel that, that that's what is you know, so amazing about this. And what we're doing with the series is creating an epic new world, something our viewers have never seen before. So I, as a, as a viewer and a customer, I'm excited, but I'm also excited on behalf of all our customers. And I can't wait for everybody to see this on September 2nd. Fantastic. Uh, but you know what? What we have right now, and we must see it again, and I'm, because I can't stop watching that, is our trailer. I, I can't have enough of that. So what do you think? Should we watch it one more time? Uh, yes, absolutely, Gaurav. I actually think it'd be a great idea to immerse all of us here in this room in the world of the rings of power once again through the trailer. OK, then, ladies and gentlemen, while we take your leave, Please enjoy the trailer of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, and don't forget that the magic begins on 2nd September only on Prime Video. Thank you. I've seen that trailer so many times, and it still gets me so hyped. But I have a very important question for you, Sushant. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering. I mean, I've read the books, you've read the books, we've seen the films. But what about those who've not followed the franchise? Can they start with this, or do they need to read everything? That's a really good question, Xerxes. And first of all, how did you all like the trailer? <laughs> so back to your question, Xerxes, not at all. Right? Okay. You don't need to have read the books or seen the films to understand the series. The Rings of Power actually takes place thousands of years before the events of the books. <laughs> and, you know, and if you're new to the world of Tolkien, I would actually think this is a great jumping off point into the world of Tolkien. Right? Our hope is that the audience will watch the series and then discover the books and would want to go deeper into the world of Tolkien. And if, like me, you are a fan of The Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, you will see characters and worlds that are familiar but different. Mm -hmm. uh, given the series precedes uh, the books by thousands of years, you will follow their origin story, really. You'll start at the beginning in a manner of speaking. And you will see iconic characters, references, and places throughout the legendarium that you, you know, that you would have heard of. And you will actually see it come to life, and in many ways, you know, come to life visually, perhaps for the first time ever. Wow. I mean, that's amazing, right? And while we'll get new fans to the franchise of The Lord of the Rings, we get to become even bigger fans, right? Yeah, absolutely, Xerxes. In fact, we have some friends of Prime Video backstage mm -hmm. uh, who are also huge fans. Mm. Uh, and who really wanted to be a part of the event today. So much so that I must tell you all that they did not want me to introduce the cast because they wanted to do it. So should we bring them on? I mean, I'm excited. Let's find out who these super fans are. All right. To introduce our first guest, she is one of the biggest superstars in India, mm -hmm. apart from obviously being a huge fan of The Lord of the Rings. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Tamanna Bhatia. Woo! Hello, Tamanna. So glad you're here with us today. All right. The only way to describe our next guest mm -hmm. is super. A superstar, a super dancer, a superhero, and also a mm -hmm. massive fan of The Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome on stage, Ritik Roshan. Woo! All 
right. Welcome, Ritik. Thank so you. So glad to have you with us. Now, before we move forward, I have to ask you the question to both of you. What about the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, are you most excited about? Tamana, you want to take a crack at it? Good afternoon, everyone. Well, definitely, Lord of the Rings, the cinematic appeal that it has, it's just one of a kind. Yeah. I still go back to it over and over again, and it still seems as fresh. I mean, it is visual storytelling at its best. So, be it the books, or any of the screen adaptations that have been made, I feel like um, they are so engrossing, and they just captivate you, take you into another world, and I feel like that quality is something I find most enchanting. Um, yeah, now that we've seen the teaser, the trailer, the preview, <laughs> I really can't wait. I think it is stunning. I, as an audience, I'm just waiting, and I think it's going to be amazing. Awesome. Ritik, what excites you the most? Oh, I think the trailer speaks for itself. Yeah. This is, uh, this is the kind of stuff that I aspire for. You know, it just, it does something to my cells. It's uh, visual extravaganza meeting great content. You know, mm. it's just pfft. And uh, I'm just excited and thrilled that I'm going to be able to watch The Middle Ages on Prime Video on 2nd September. I also have a, a little tale to tell, okay. if, I, if I may. Please. There's a little connection between me and The Lord of the Rings that I don't think anybody knows. And uh, I recall this, this, this morning. Uh, so one random day back in 2004, my dad put on The Lord of the Rings, part one, saw the film, couldn't stop, saw part two, couldn't stop, saw part three. And then he gave me a call, and he was just talking about the way they've used this one great, incredible idea, and then progressed and had this progression which was so incredible. And why can't we do that? So I said, okay, yeah, what, what are you talking about? And he said, why can't we take Koi Milgya, which is one of our previous films, and have a progression and build on that? And that was the birth of Krish. Wow. So if there was no Lord of the Rings, there'd be no wow. Krish. Yeah. So I'm going to take this opportunity to give my little thanks to the Lord of the Rings <laughs> for making Krish happen. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Tamanna. Thank you, Ritek. Uh, it's been an absolute labor of love for us bringing this series to you. And we hope fans everywhere not only enjoy it, but also see the sincerity that we have attempted with uh, in bringing Tolkien's work to life, right? And I thank you once again. Uh, I will now leave you to fans of The Lord of the Rings to bring on the stage the amazing team behind the series, all yours now. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Sushant Sriram. This, come on, we can do better. Yeah. This is truly an exciting moment for me and us, the fans of the fantasy franchise right now. And I am not going to take any more time, leave you into the capable hands of Hrithik and Tamanna. Over to you guys. Thank you, Xerxes. Thank you very much. It's indeed a matter of great honor and privilege to be interacting with the magnificent team behind this epic series. And I think the time has come. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our incredible showrunner, Mr. J.D. Payne. Oh, yeah. Ritik Tamana, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Welcome to India, Mr. Thank Payne. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited and delighted <laughs> that you are here. Thank you very much. It's uh, wonderful to be in India, and I feel like I had a very warm welcome. I had a few minutes to wander the streets, and uh, like two minutes after I got out of my car, uh, a holy man walked up to me and um, put a dot on my forehead and tied a, tied a bracelet around me and gave me a blessing. So, oh, that's I, it, it. That's so it. I, I instantly felt blessed and welcomed in your country. So thank you. That says that all is going to be a huge success now. <laughs> <I believe it. laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> well, 
This is such an incredible, aspiring piece of work. I just saw the trailer and I'm completely blown. Absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you. Tell me, I, I was just, uh, what was your experience of encountering Tolkien's work? And what does Tolkien mean to you? Um, so I came to Tolkien by way of the Peter Jackson films. I uh, saw them first when I was in my early 20s. And um, they were one of the few films that came out when I was an adult that got into my heart the way that films used to when I was a kid. Uh, and from there I did the deep dive and read all the books and, and yeah. you know, got super into it. And now they've woven themselves into the fabric of my life. Uh, very rare does a day go by that I don't reference something happening in my life by way of Lord of the Rings, saying I feel like Frodo carrying the ring today <laughs> or um, you know, uh, when weddings or funerals come along, Tolkien quotes always make their way into my toasts or eulogies. So Tolkien is just part of my soul. I can see, I can see the passion and it shows in your work. And you have your incredible cast here with you. Oh, they're absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm really incredible. excited to meet them. I've always believed that, you know, casting has, uh, is one of the most difficult aspects of filmmaking. How was this process for you? How, how difficult was it for you? Well, so we knew we had to get this right. The story we're telling is an amazing story. It's Tolkien's untold story of the Second Age. So we're telling the story of, of the forging of the Rings of Power, uh, the rise of the Dark Lord Sauron, uh, the fall of Numenor, and finally the last alliance of Elves and Men. And so to be able to bring that really to life, we knew we needed a cast that was really special. And so we had really two criteria for our cast. And one, they had to be amazing performers, but two, they had to have Middle Earth in them. Um, you had to look in their eyes and feel like they could have stepped out of a magical portal and been from Middle Earth transported to our world. Um, and so we auditioned hundreds and hundreds of people for every single role and found uh, 22 needles in 22 haystacks. <laughs> That's incredible. How long was the process? Um, for, for, uh, quite a long time. I mean, it took a bit, basically a year to find you know, wow. our entire cast. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And is this the first time that you're working with Amazon Studios? Uh, yes. What yeah, was that, that experience like? Uh, amazing. Um, so Amazon decided that they, they wanted to put on um, this uh, enormous adaptation of Tolkien and they had a, a huge ambition and um, our, our, our ambition matched their appetite for what they wanted to do. They went out and got the rights to it and then mm -hmm. they basically said it's a wide open field and so they, they opened it up to Hollywood to say like who has an idea for how they'd like to take this material and tell a story and my partner and I came in and, and pitched a, a, a way in and, and they got excited about it and since then they have uh, been wow. incredibly supportive. They've given every resource necessary to realize Tolkien's imagination on the grandest scale possible. Wow, that's incredible. They're amazing. It's been, <laughs> I, we've been very, 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 very fortunate. I'm so glad you had a great experience. I mean, it was, it was a fantastic experience. Like, you know, and I've worked with every studio in town in Hollywood, and Amazon has been amazingly supportive. I have one last question. How many days did it take you to shoot? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> it was, it was, well, you know, so we had COVID that was in the middle of it. So oh, we, we, we oh. shot uh, 20 some odd days and then COVID uh, uh, interrupted us and we were on a hiatus for about six months. And then, so, I mean, uh, it depends on how you count first unit days, second unit days, stunt days, VFX days, but something like 300-ish. Count them know, all. Sort of, yeah, 300-ish, you know, yeah. And so a, a, a gargantuan schedule. Okay. I'd say that's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can you imagine my state as to how badly I'm fangirling right now? Like... <laughs> J.D. Payne, Hrithik Roshan. <laughs> J.D. Payne, welcome to India. How has it been for you? I really want to know. Oh, it's been fantastic. It's been really fantastic. Um, I've dreamed of coming to India my entire life. I, I've um, admired this entire uh, country from afar and uh, had Indian friends since I was a, a young boy. My first Indian friend was Aviv Bhatia um, that I used to play uh, soccer and football with when we were 10 years old and, and uh, you know, I've had Indian friends ever since and, and um, so it's beautiful to, beautiful to finally come to, the, to this, this wonderful, wonderful place. I'm so glad you feel that way. Now I'm, I'm going to dare and ask you this question. You are an epic storyteller. Star Trek, guys, there's nobody <laughs> who hasn't seen it. It's not possible. So. I mean, this is something that's a familiar ground for you in terms of scale and, you know, storytelling. But was it daunting for you to attempt material that...
Sunil Dada, Dada. Done. Done. 